The next question is from Steve Coe. Oh. Um, latest available rep uh, um, research from the ABS 2012 uh, personal um, safety uh, survey and the Australian Institute of uh, Criminologies indicates that at least one in three of uh, victims of uh, family violence uh, in intimate relationships happen to be the male, the men. And, and the perpetrator uh, significantly happened to be the women. And I, I should know because I must say I am a victim. I was a victim. I was assaulted and I suffered immensely with psychological trauma. But the thing is that nobody believed me. The police, social worker, the court system, not even me mates. You see, I just happened to be a, a bloke. So I asked the, the panel, how do we raise awareness to recognize and help the male victims of family violence as in such a way that we don't take away all the good work we already have in preventing violence against women. Simon, you can start us off. And that's a really good question because when we're focusing on, on the majority, which is what we are at the moment, that, that far more women get harmed, minority voices get lost in, in this. Um, some of the minority voices that experience violence, are, um, I'm seeing an increase on the Gold Coast and indeed we are nationally of adolescent sons abusing their mothers, um, especially when there's not another um, bloke around to say, hey mate, step it down. That's a problem. Elder abuse is a huge problem. Same sex relationships, uh, is a huge problem in domestic violence and men. And those, especially with men, because we have this stereotype that women can't be violent. So it's a bit icky for us to take that on board. And they are marginalised and there's no service provision. I think we have to invite those minority people into the conversation so what we're talking about tonight doesn't exclude them. I really think that's important. Natasha, um, there is a, a push from some sectors for uh, gender neutral services. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, um, men and women, boys and girls, can be the subject of domestic, family uh, violence, and sexual assault. The ABS statistics are very clear, though, that women are three times more likely to be such victims. Can I say, though, that anyone who is the victim of violence deserves to be heard, believed, Supported. Mm. There's no question about that. <laughs> Violence happens to different groups, as we've discussed. It also happens mm. not only in heterosexual relationships, it happens in homosexual relationships as well. The vast majority of perpetrators are men, and that's why it's considered very much a gendered issue across the world, and here in particular. So when you talk about neutrality, yes, we have to engage men. You've heard very good reasons tonight from everyone on the panel as to why that is critical, while behavioural change is crit critical. But also we have to recognise, as I mentioned before, there are some key determinants as to why we have violence to this extent, to this severity, and understanding that there are different definitions of the severity and the impact on women who are disproportionately affected. When you take that into account, we have to acknowledge that this is still a gender issue, gendered issue. So neutrality doesn't always cut it. You've said it, Charlie, tailored programs, targeted programs, mm. one size fits all doesn't work. There is a gender aspect to this issue, and that is not to say that other Quick people, response men if you're going to get inside. Victims. And we can hold that gendered approach very comfortably with psychological approaches of attachment, trauma, and strength-based engagement approaches. It doesn't have to exclude each other. We can hold multiple approaches and invite the mental health services, invite psychologists, yeah. invite mental health online. experts, as well as as all the other people already that are engaged okay, in this we're, we're just about out of time. Natasha wants to jump in and just respond briefly. Our, watch, One our, line she our says. vision is of a violence-free Australia. I don't want anyone to be subject to violence in our community. Okay.